Nobody has flawless skin, nobody. And you know, this took me a really long time to realize because I'm visually impaired. I was seeing people on TV and so many of them have like airbrushed makeup skin and it's beautiful. And then you see magazines and skin is just like glowing and radiant and flawless. And it's just not real. Welcome to my channel. I'm Danny Marie AUC. And today we're gonna have a little fun with makeup. Let's jump in. If you're new and you'd like to support my channel, you can do so by subscribing. If you'd like to support my channel otherwise, you can do so by liking, commenting, and sharing. So I did a recent video, which I will link above and below in the description, where I talked about the struggle of finding a foundation for my very pale skin. <laughs> for those of you that are new here, I have something called albinism and it affects the level of pigment in my skin, hair, and eyes. It also has some vision issues along with it. And because I have albinism, I am legally blind. I will be sort of hinting on the challenges of that as we go along. Needless to say, makeup has been a challenging journey for me over the past few years. I didn't start really wearing makeup until I was well past 18. And when I did, I didn't really have anybody who could teach me in person. So I learned from various YouTube videos and YouTube tutorials. That was how I learned to do makeup. And of course, through a bit of trial and error and actually trying things out for myself to see, to see what was going to work for me. So it was, um, it was a fun adventure. <laughs> When I first started, there were not a lot of makeup lines, especially foundations, that cater to someone with as fair of skin as I have. And so that was a real challenge when I first started. I want to share with you guys my everyday makeup. And when I say everyday makeup, I, I don't actually mean that I wear makeup every day, honestly. But this is what I normally wear in streams or in videos or when I feel like wearing makeup when I go out. But honestly, I just, I don't wear makeup very often. One, because where I live, it gets very hot and humid and it's quickly approaching summer where hot and humid meets its peak. And it's just, makeup adds so much heat, you know? It adds so much heat and then you have to worry about it melting off. Two, my eyes are very sensitive. So even the little bit of mascara that I wear sometimes will start aggravating my eyes. And three, I still wear my mask when I go out. So <laughs> the bother of worrying about whether the makeup's gonna end up all on the inside of my mask or whether my mask is gonna smear my makeup and when I take it off, I'm gonna have like lines all around here on my face and stuff. So I just, I don't wear it very often and that's fine. There is nothing wrong with wearing zero makeup if that's what makes you happy. I just want you guys to know that this video isn't a, oh, you should wear makeup, you know, kind of video. That's, that's not what I'm about. But I did want to share my everyday, in quotation marks, routine <laughs> for makeup. So this is my, you know, my makeup station at my new house. I used to have a bathroom, a very large bathroom where I would put my makeup on and how I would do it is I would get very close to a large like full length mirror that I had mounted on the wall. And that was what I found was best for me when applying my own makeup and actually looking at it while I was applying it. I don't really have that option here. I have it on my closet door, which is on the other side of the bedroom. So I do walk over there when I'm putting things on to check, especially. So for those who can see, I have one of these makeup mirrors. It's probably, it's probably dirty. I, I don't use it religiously, but um, it's one of the ones with one side is regular and the other side is magnified and it has a light on it. But even on the dimmest setting, having that light right around the ring where I'm looking at my face is just too intense for me. So part of albinism is that I have light sensitivity and that that means that I struggle with regular makeup mirrors. So that's just one of the things I deal with. But let's get into this makeup routine. The first thing I do after I clean my face and usually put sunscreen lotion on my face as well, I try and wear that every single day because I lack pink my skin. I am also sensitive to sun. 
I use this Benefit Professional. It's just meant to decrease the look of pores on your skin and I just use a little, little bit of that. Rub it together a little bit on my fingers. And then, oh, I forgot to take my glasses off, of course. I was actually using them to make sure I was in frame. <laughs> but um, I just rub this on my face. It feels very smooth, like it might have, um, I, th I think they make these with silicone. No, I could be wrong. But I think they make these with silicone. So I just smooth it on my face. And then, of course, I'll put the lid back on. Now, next is foundation. I actually don't do all the concealer underneath my foundation or, or on top of it for that matter. <laughs> I like to keep things fairly simple. If you guys want a rundown of all the foundations I've tried recently and in the past, please check out the video that I linked uh, in the beginning of this video and in the description below. But the one I use currently that I really like is this Clinique Even Better. This is in the shade 0 0.5 Shell. And it's, it's a very nice light makeup, but I did recently try this. This is L'Oreal True Match in C0.5. I have a cool undertone and sometimes it is hard to find light shades in a cool undertone. And I actually really think this matches me well. But today, because this is my everyday look, I'm actually going to use this Clinique foundation. So how I apply this is, I put a little bit on the back of my hand And then I get my brush. I do use a brush to apply. This is an Eco Tools brush. I think it is, it has the word complexion in the name, but I can't remember exactly. So I just dab a little bit and then I start spreading it around my face. Now, how I do this without often having to look in a mirror is I just do it methodically. So I usually start with my forehead and work my way down my nose and I make sure to blend up near my hairline hopefully don't get too much in my hair because for those who can't see my hair is very white um so <laughs> so if i get it all in my hair it's probably visible to most people but i work it on my nose and then i start working around my eyes my cheeks of course down my temples for my forehead i make sure to connect those and blend it before i forget what i was doing you know <laughs> Um, I have used all kinds of tools to put on my makeup. I have used the sponges. I've used the disposable sponges. I have used my fingers. I have, what else have I tried? And I've tried various kinds of brushes. This so far is my favorite brush. I have, the main two brushes I have used are this one and a stippling brush that I will show you guys in just a minute. But yeah, I go through here and I, I have some points that I make sure to stipple, which means you just press the makeup on a little bit back and forth with the brush. My nose is one spot because I actually do have a little scar on the tip of my nose that goes across it, like right this right here. Um, <laughs> When I was in about fourth grade, I ran full speed into a chain link fence with my face. These are just the fun stories you acquire as someone who is legally blind. But um, it left a scar on my nose. It didn't injure me in any serious sense, but it left a, a scar on my nose. Um, I, I was doing some research on this a while back. Actually, a lot of people have, um, if you injure your nose a little bit, the cartilage in there breaks a little bit and people will end up having a very similar scar to what I have, which I thought was kind of cool. But also, I um, sometimes will get blemishes. I had one kind of down here on my chin that I will stipple over a little bit. I used to deal with a lot of acne and cystic acne. So I do have um, a little bit of texture on my skin and it, it does make me self-conscious. I have a little bit of scarring above my lip I'm just going to point all of this out for you guys, <laughs> but um, that's okay. You know, that's what we're about here. Um, I just, I mean, I just like honesty, <laughs> even if that means pointing out all of my flaws for you guys, but um, I'm very happy 
with how my skin looks now compared to what it used to look like. I, when I was 18 or 19, I was able to go to the dermatologist. And after, oh gosh, after it seemed like a couple years, I was finally able to get most of my, most of my stuff cleared up. Now, like I said, I would usually go look in the mirror by my closet, but I'm gonna look right here in this one. Just make sure I can't see any obvious spots that I missed. I see my nose still looks a little weird. Um, so I, I like to go back over my nose. Sometimes I will add just a little bit more foundation, which I think I will do now. Just like a dot on here. If I can get it to come out the bottom. Okay. A little bit for my nose and I will have to blend this really well because that was actually more than I intended to put on there. That's okay. Um, I know probably a lot of makeup gurus get to look into their uh, viewfinder. <laughs> But literally all I can see in my viewfinder is the basic layout. Like I can see where the counter sits back here and I can see where my head is and I can see where my hair kind of is, but I can't really see anything beyond that detail wise. So I, I really am putting this on blind. I'm doing it by feel. And I know that was a huge trend a while back. I wish I was doing YouTube back then. Cause I'd have just been like, yeah, I got this bro. I did this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, but I, I think uh, I think that makeup trend actually bothered a lot of people, and I get it. Um, in a way, it, some of the ways that the creators were handling it was a little bit, I don't know, uh, maybe a little belittling of those who actually are visually impaired and do makeup. I know quite a few ladies, and some who do makeup way better than I do, who are visually impaired. It is actually amazing. I mean, I'm just going to say, you guys all know, Molly Burke does makeup. And yes, she has somebody check her makeup, but she does her makeup by herself. She doesn't have somebody do her makeup for her every day. And that just really goes to show you that it can be done. I just wish more people knew that, I guess. <laughs> and then, of course, for me, the extra struggle is having albinism and being able to find the shades that I need. And another thing is just to be sure you blend it really well because, I mean, can you overblend? Is that a is that a thing that can happen? I don't know. The other brush that I used to use for my foundation is this is this Real Techniques brush. It is a stippling brush. It has. Um, it has bits on it that are different lengths and it is literally meant to be stippled or pressed back and forth into your skin, like tapped basically, if you think of how you would tap on your face. Um, trying to describe that for those who are watching, I do have many visually impaired and blind friends. So if you ever see my video and you're like, why are you explaining that so weirdly? Like that is why. Um, now I do want to show you guys this. I have my brushes in this container here. These simple containers are so great to divide things and keep things organized. And this just came from Dollar Tree. Really, Dollar Tree is a gold mine. Next, I will do powder to set my foundation because my other makeup is powder. My blush is powder. My highlight is powder. And the one I normally use is, is this Urban Decay D-Slick. I mean, this D slick here, this stuff is great. But um, I actually dropped mine and I broke the I broke the top. I'm a little sad about it, but I'm not about to go out and buy more for that reason. So I just take my little eco tools. This is just a powder brush. Dab it, tap it off, so I get the extra, and then just go over my entire face with a little bit of this powder. Now doing this, like I said, is supposed to help set the foundation in place and maybe also absorb any oils or extra that's left and it just gets it ready so that you can blend other powder makeups on top of it i again i'm not a makeup expert i did spend years i did spend years researching makeups i, I can always struggle to figure out which way it goes back on there because like to put it back on there you know to set it back on there snugly before i put it back now there is another 
Let me find it. Another powder I used to use is this Stargazer powder. It's just pressed powder white. That's literally what it says. And that is exactly, that is exactly what it is. It is a white pressed powder. I mentioned that I used to struggle with foundations. I just want to show you guys this before I move on. This is a white foundation. This one is quite old, um, probably needs to be thrown away, but I like having it in case someone asks me so I can send them a picture. But um, this is Manic Panic Stargazer. It is just a white foundation and you mix it in with your foundation if it's too dark. And it helps to lighten it up, of course. Next, I have blush, and I generally just stick with using the same kind of blush. I'm pretty simple. Uh, when I find a product that seems to work for me, I just, I stick with it for a while. This is just a Milani blush in the shade T Rose. And this is the shade. I will open it and show you guys as well. It actually looked like a rose when I got it. It still kind of does. I'm surprised I've been using this blush for a while. Now this brush I'm using for this is literally just an e.l.f. Bl blush brush. It's just a very simple and very cheap brush, but it's very soft. Now the handle is a little wobbly. It feels like it's gonna break, but I've been using it for probably a few years and it hasn't broken yet. So I guess, <laughs> I guess it's pretty good. Now again, what I do with this blush to apply it is I just smile and I go for the the balls on my cheeks, which is the high point, not the top where your eyes are, but center and a little low because I don't do contour. Um, I have, but I don't usually. And I just work it around and then up toward my temple just to give my face some color because we've kind of taken it all away with the uh, foundation we used. Now, that is something I will usually check in the mirror just to be sure I didn't overdo it. And as far as I can tell, as far as I can tell, it seems pretty good. I think you guys might be watching this and I might have like too much blush, which is kind of funny, honestly. But next I do like highlighter. I really need to find a new highlighter. So if you guys have highlighter suggestions that are like radiance, but still a little natural, please share them below. I need your help. Um, this is just a wet and wild highlighter. Let's see if I can read the color. Mega Glow Highlighting Powder. Does it have a shade? Oh, it's at the top, hold on. Okay, to get my phone out to read this, but this is Wet n Wild. I can read the front. It just says Highlighter Powder in Blossom Glow. So this is just the one I've been using for a little while. Again, if you guys have suggestions. Oh, I can't always remember which side opens. But I use a Real Techniques highlighting brush. It's kind of a teardrop shaped brush. So you can get a good bit on here and then I tap a little bit off and then I go under my eyes right above where I put the blush and just kind of swipe it up a little bit because what you're doing with this is you're trying to highlight the parts of your face that you want highlighted. Now again, I know some ladies do like that full on makeup look where they, they go through with serious contour and highlight and um and <laughs> and concealer sorry about that i had a little bit of a brain fart but um i also put it over my eyelashes right near the tip of your eye not on the tip of my eye but sort of the brow bone that sits between your eye and your eye brow hopefully that is descriptive enough for you guys and that's just to, like I said, highlight the high points of your face. And I do go down my nose, the very center of my nose. And I, I can do this without looking in a mirror. It's honestly, it's even with your eyes closed, if you have done it before, you just very gently find your nose with the tip of the brush and go straight down. And the same goes for the top of the lip and the chin, the point of the chin and done. The next thing I normally do is pretty simple. I have <laughs> fluffy eyebrows. So I take a little spoolie brush and this brush is a little dirty, you guys. I, I absolutely need to clean my brushes. They are all overdue. But um, I take the spoolie brush and I just brush my eye, eyebrows up and out just so they don't look um, disheveled. Cause I have seen them where they look a little like <laughs> a little wild 
and they are wild, but I always like to say my eyebrows are invisible, so does it really matter? Next, I have another Urban Decay product. I actually really, <laughs> I actually have found so many useful products in Urban Decay. This is actually their All Nighter D Slick Makeup Setting Spray. Now, I finally broke down and bought the full size because I've gone through two or three of the sample sizes, and I'm just like, you know what? I should just get it. I've been using it. I like it. So this, I just, well, should have done it with my mouth open though. <laughs> that does not taste good. I think it, it is generally meant to just help blend the powders together. And that one is supposed to, um, well, de-slick, so it's supposed to help reduce oil and things like that. Next, and I have showed this off in a short video because this is my holy grail. Um, <laughs> this is my holy grail product, I would say. And for anyone who has albinism and is going for that just natural albino look with the white lashes like this, I highly recommend this. I, it's an Urban Decay product again. It is the Urban Decay Subversion Lash Primer, and it is essentially just a white lash primer, but I'm gonna put this on and then I'm gonna show you. It adds so much volume to my lashes and it makes them pop. So I get to keep wearing, you know, my, my natural lashes in their natural white color, which I know is probably weird for some people, but I do get compliments. I, I have learned to enjoy them at this point in my life. I used to hate them, but so I can put these on actually without looking in a mirror. It's actually very easy. I get this very close to my eye. I find the very tip of my eyelashes because believe it or not, you can feel when that touches the tip of your eyelash. And I just slowly work my way down to the inside of the eyelash and I spin the applicator to make sure I get a very full application. It's a little weird to do while talking, but uh, I get a very full application. And I do the same on the other side. I do my top lashes first. I think I have a hair actually right here somewhere, but I can't find it, of course. I just do the same thing. And spin. And slowly work around to the inside of the eye. Trying to be very gentle because I have, <laughs> I have poked myself in the eye. I have definitely brushed this all on the underside of my uh, waterline. <laughs> Not pleasant. But then I just very carefully brush this toward where my bottom lashes are. Now these are very hard to get for me. I know people like to use sample size mascaras with the smaller, smaller applicator. Some people like the applicators with the ball on the end. I just haven't had a lot of experience with those because, well, this is the mascara that I use. So it's the applicator I use. I mean, you know, I'd say I'm limited. I have used clear mascara primers before. Like I don't remember which, but there was a drugstore brand that made a clear one. There's probably more than one now. And it just didn't do much for me. So I didn't use it for very long. Now, what I do now is I will take my two pointer fingers or whatever, two matching fingers, however, whatever your preference is. And I will just make sure to, like when people will curl their eyelashes, I just push the top eyelashes up, make sure they're all headed in the right direction together. And I do the same thing with the bottom lashes. And that part is done. That is all I do for my eyes now. And part of the reason is because my eyes are easily irritated, but also part of the reason is because I deal with weirdly oily eyelids. And right now I'm trying to use an eye cream to see if that helps. Um, if you guys have any recommendations, please let me know. What I end up having happen is that my, my eye makeup will look pretty good and then they will get oily and they will start running together. And yes, yes, I have tried various eyelid primers. I've tried different types of, um, different types of eyeshadow, including the creamy kind, including powders. I've tried different application methods. It, it always runs and pretty much looks looks gross. Next, I do lips. Now I always exfoliate and I don't actually use an exfoliator. I actually use these little waxy lip balms. These are the EOS ones. I'm sure there are other ones you could use. This is just kind of what I got in the habit of using. So I just, I put a little bit of this on my lips. And then I take a cotton swab and I exfoliate my lip. And by exfoliate, I simply mean that I'm rubbing the cotton swab around my lip 
partially to exfoliate and partially to rub some of the um, some of the wax lip balm off. I also have a container here that is, um, it's normally what you'd use for silverware. It also came from Dollar Tree. I'll show it to you. It is a long rectangle and it is full of lipsticks. <laughs> I am, um, I, I might have a lipstick problem. I don't actually wear all these now, but um, I really, for a while, fell in love with these Maybelline Superstay Matte Ink lipsticks and these are liquid lipsticks. And this is why I got into using the wax chapsticks actually, because what I would do is I would apply these and then I would take that wax chapstick and I would dab it on on top and it would make it last longer. It would keep it from getting a little crusty looking like some of these liquid lipsticks can do over time. And it really made a difference. Now though, I have to say, I, I keep it pretty simple. I wear the same couple of lipsticks and I'm fine with that. I found some that I really like and I like the cream ones. Um, I am a little sad to say that two of my favorites are also high-end brands. They just, they just last longer and they feel better on my lips and they don't stink. I mean, I know, I know some of you guys are out. You know, you, you do, you do drugstore brands and that's how I started out as well. But the ones I really love, I have to say, are MAC. MAC has amazing lipsticks. If you've never used a MAC lipstick around the holidays, they do sell sample packs where I am actually still using my sample pack from a few years ago, which is probably not a good thing, but you know, it is what it is. And it came with three sample size lipsticks. These are not full size. They are pretty tiny, but they last longer than you think, unless you're one of those who wears lipstick every day and applies more than once a day. But I love those. My other current favorite, again, is Urban Decay. This is my current favorite shade. This is the shade Naked, and it is a very soft, a very soft pink. And again, I can just put this on. I feel. Now, I absolutely always check my lipstick because I, <laughs> I have certainly ended up with lipstick um, all outside of my lips, everywhere. I have smeared it out a little bit like Joker. I have <laughs> made a real mess of it sometimes. So it's always good to either have somebody check your lipstick and your mascara if you're wearing dark mascara because I am certainly no stranger to having dotted the, uh, the inside corner of my nose with my mascara wand. <laughs> I actually have a picture I will... Um, I'll insert up here of when I did that and the picture I kept because, uh, well, I love the picture. I don't, I never edited that out. I don't know why, but I just left it. I was like, you know what? <laughs> happens. Let's get my glasses back on here. <laughs> and that is my very simple makeup routine. Like I said, I don't wear it every day and it is perfectly fine if you do not feel comfortable wearing makeup. Never feel pressured into wearing makeup if that's not something you enjoy because there's no reason you have to. I know society is always telling us that you have to have flawless skin and it has to be perfect, but you know what? Nobody has flawless skin, nobody. And you know, this took me a really long time to realize because I'm visually impaired. I was seeing people on TV and so many of them have like airbrushed makeup skin and it's beautiful. And then you see magazines and skin is just like glowing and radiant and flawless. And it's just not real. It's not, it's not real at all. And I, if you don't know that now, please hear me when I say this, everybody has flawed skin. Everybody has scars. I have another scar on my chin I didn't mention, but it is huge. And it's been there since I was a kid and I, I used to hate it so much. I, some days I still wish I could get rid of it, but we all have scars. We all have blemishes on our skin or scars from acne or pores that are a little big or, or moles or whatever it is you have. You are absolutely beautiful. 
it doesn't matter if you have flaws in your skin. It doesn't matter if you like to wear makeup. It doesn't matter if you hate wearing makeup. It doesn't matter if you like to cake that makeup on and like that is what you, you feel most like yourself in. Don't stop doing that because someone else or society tells you that that's not okay. I, I have my preferences. My preferences are to look more natural, you know, like myself. And, and that's fine for me. But if you, especially if you have albinism and you're somebody you like to dye your eyebrows and your eyelashes and you like to dye your hair, that's fine. Whatever works for you is what works for you. And it doesn't matter what anybody else is doing. And that is one of the hardest lessons to learn. And it will break your heart until you learn it. At least it did for me. So I just want to say that so many times on this channel so that you guys know somebody, somebody says you're beautiful and it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what choices you make as far as your beauty and your makeup regime and your, you know, things like that are concerned. You do what you do you. I say it all the time and it is so true and I really do mean it. You do you. It's not a sarcastic retort when I disagree with someone. It's true. You do you. That's all you can do. So <laughs> if you guys have makeup questions and suggestions for me, feel free to drop them below. I, I, I do love answering them and I love hearing suggestions for different makeups to try. And again, if you want to know what foundations I have tried in the past, check the description below or check my, I think it is hair and beauty playlist. I'll link the playlist above here. Let me know. Do you guys prefer makeup? Do you hate makeup? Do you cake on makeup because you love the way it emphasizes your face? Like, is that your thing? Nothing wrong with that. And I'm not saying cake in a negative, in a negative way. I promise. I, I just mean some people... Some people like their layers and that's cool. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting my channel. As always, you are wonderful people and it means the world to me. But uh, until next time, stay curious. Bye. <laughs>